Hi, I'm Martin. I'm going to help you with tips and tricks with IKEA furniture today. IKEA furniture is very inexpensive furniture to buy as compared to other furniture. Um, the reason it's inexpensive is because they use some cheaper stuff, but uh, it doesn't mean that you can't get the most out of your IKEA furniture. I admit, I buy it, I assemble it, I've gotten many years out of IKEA furniture. But I've learned some tricks along the, out along the way. I'm going to share with you. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. Um, first thing I'm going to tell you is uh, you want to organize your stuff. So I'm going to show you right here. This is a drawer we're going to assemble. And I, everything we're going to do with the drawer is pretty much the same thing you do with any IKEA furniture. Okay. Of course, there's always exceptions and so forth. But I have this face down. Um, this is the back side of the thing. I put it on a piece of paper to help protect the face. I have my two sides. I have the bottom nearby. I have my tools, my rails, my hardware right here. I kind of sorted it out so it's easier to get to um, when I need it. My knobs and of course IKEA instructions. By the way, did you guys notice how the IKEA instructions are? There's no uh, nothing to read because it's written in man. This is the way men read instructions pictures i love it all right it shows you everything you need to do by looking at the pictures okay there even shows you really um good description of the screws you're going to be using different types of hardware okay you can see here the hardware that is in here i have some plastic pieces that uh similar to nails they slide in one way but they don't pull out I'm really not fond of these, but that's what comes with the kit. But I'm going to show you um, ways to make this even work better. Our dowels. Dowels are usually pretty good, but they only help line things up. They're really not too much for support, just a little bit. You have these little screws that uh, is utilized to uh, pull two pieces of wood together in the 90 degree, which you'll see as we assemble this drawer. And we got our screws, our little slip uh, these things slip into the hole and they're actually gonna pull this pull this anchor in you can see the little slot in there okay and the way it works is that slot lines up with that and as it pulls around it kind of hard to do with one hand because I'm holding the camera it will actually draw it up and tighten it up and you'll see that all right now I'm gonna go over there and show you what kind of tools we need um, I use electric um, power drill. All right. Uh, do you want to use it? Eh. If you're good at it, fine. But if you're not good with the trigger and you're not, you know, you don't have a good feel for it, just use a regular screwdriver. We don't want to damage the wood. It's really easy to damage the wood. So a regular screwdriver works fine. It just takes longer. Hammer, no doubt. Screwdriver. Now, here's some of the tricks right, right off the bat. I'm going to show you some silicone sealer. It doesn't really matter too much what kind. All right. Um, the bit, best thing you can get is this stuff called E6000. Okay, it comes in a tube like this. And E6000 works on wood, metal, plastic, all kinds of different things, glass. Um, it's a softer glue. And it takes a long time to, to dry or cure. Uh, however, it's pretty durable and it's a little bit flexible and helps seal as well. All right. I use this a lot when I assemble the furniture. Okay. Um, another thing that I use is this stuff called Loctite. Uh, there's different colors of Loctite. There's red, green, blue. I use blue for this because it's not the hardest um, Loctite that's out there. What this does is it locks the screw in so it doesn't vibrate loose or come loose after a while. However, um, it is still uh, removable. There is a lighter, I don't know what the color is, I think green is the lighter one. It's either green or yellow that you can use that makes it very easy to remove, but I think it's a little bit too easy, so I use blue, okay? All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the screws in these four holes right here. And then the screws we're going to use, I'm going to grab my screws. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab four screws. Four of these dowels. 
Okay, so I'm ready. I'll bring them over here. Okay, I just put them close by. Now I'm gonna take my screw. All right, let me get. Uh, I gotta figure out a way to do this so I can hold the camera. So you're going to take your, your screw here, okay, and I'm going to put a little glue on the threads. Oops, sorry, it got out of focus. So I'm going to put a little glue right on the threads, all right? Not much. I just basically put it inside the tube a little bit. I'll show you here. As soon as I figure out a way to prop this, I'm going to pause this. For okay, here we go. I'm going to take our, our cap off here. Sometimes this stuff comes out, so be careful. Maybe put a piece of cardboard underneath it. Just put a little bit on the end. That's all you need. I actually got way too much here. I'm going to take the screw and put it in the hole. Okay. This is where I'm going to use my power screw gun here. You can use a regular screwdriver. If it goes in a little bit of an angle, it's okay. It'll straighten itself out. If it's a really steep angle, you're going to have to unscrew it and reline it up. You want to try to go as straight as possible. All right, I just hit it a couple times with the impact part of my drive. But now it's in. And you can see there's a little glue down there, and that's fine. That's what we're looking for. All right, now I'm going to do the next one here. Same thing. Just put a little in there. Put it in the hole. Okay, now I'm going to take my dowel. This is cool. Take the dowel, put it right in there. I got a little bit on the end. It's really hard to see, but there's some on the end. I'm going to put it in here. Sometimes you need to tap it in with a hammer. Okay, when the sound changes, you know you hit the bottom. Do the same. Then, after you do that, take it and put a little on the top part of the dowel itself. Alright, now, I'm going to take my board here. Okay, this is the one that's going to go in. Basically, you see how the holes line up there? So this is going to go down like this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a thin coat of this glue right there. Now keep in mind, none of this stuff with the glue is stuff that IKEA recommends. This is what I recommend. This is what's going to make your desk or table any kind of IKEA furniture last longer. So I slid it into place, as you can see. You can see the two openings there. That's where our special doodads go. Let me go get two. So you can see that. And there's a little... Uh, I'll see if you can focus. I'll see if I get it to focus. Okay. I don't think you can see this, but there's a little arrow. So what you do is you start the arrow pointing down toward the, wo uh, toward the device. I'm going to point it down. Push it all the way in, point this one down, push it all the way in. Alright, so I got both arrows pointing in, then I'm just going to take the screwdriver, I'm going to rotate this clockwise, it's got to go clockwise, and you can do this in little um, increments, so I, I'll tighten it a little bit, I'll tighten this one a little bit. Now. Believe it or not, these have a little bit of a uh, detent, so you can feel, if it's straight up and down, you could go just a little bit more. You can see it's a little bit past 90, and I felt it. It, it like locked into place. So it, it, what it did was it drew the board downward, tight to this part here, and then uh, locked it into place. Now, you can't really see it with this camera, what happened, let's see if you can, what happened is you got a little of the glue uh, squeezed out here. Now, in some cases, you don't have to clean out the glue, but I do. I clean it out 
for the most part. In some spots, I let it sit, especially if you don't see it. A little bit more glue ain't going to hurt, but make sure it's not in, in going to interfere with the opening and closing of your drawer. But you could take like a, a knife like this, just a little uh, um, putty knife, okay? And you use this to kind of cut through. I pulled that off, okay? Now, nobody could really see in here, so I'm not going to make it perfect. But if you want, you can take a rag to it and clean all that glue off so you can't see any of it. But the important glue, which is down in between the two, stays. And that's great because that's what it's going to take to make this sturdier in the long run. All right, so I'm going to repeat the same for the other side, and I'll be right back. All right, now to continue, um, you'll see there's a groove. This is the piece, you know, the piece of the drawer that faces to the outside. And you're going to have your bottom side fit in this groove. So I'll kind of show you what that looks like. So you see this, this is the bottom of the uh, dresser drawer. Fits in this groove. Alright, so my biggest problem is with this bottom side here, it's really not wood. It's just basically sawdust that is glued and pressed into, you know, it's a little bit stronger than cardboard, but not as strong as wood. I'm sorry, it just isn't. But um, the uh, biggest issue with this is it does tend to flax. And it'll crack pretty easily if you step on it. Now, yeah, I know, you're never supposed to step on it. It's a dresser drawer. But, uh, you know, I have kids. You have, do you have kids? All I know is if you have kids, <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. They just seem to try anything. I guess use the dresser drawer to get to something they're not supposed to. I don't know. So here, I'm going to do a few things. Let me set this down. To prepare. So the first thing I'm going to do... Like I said, I'm going to put some glue, glue in this channel here. This is actually the part that I use the silicone right here. And the reason I use in the silicone is because it has a nice little tip that gets into the group itself. So you can see. You just go all the way across. You don't have to go all the way to the end. Keep in mind, you know, there's you'll end up with having to clean more up if you don't, um, if you overdo it. But you know, just get some in that groove. And one of the things is don't overdo this. You just need to get some. I used white, by the way, so if any some spills out. Um, I can actually just let it cure and it kind of matches everything anyways. They do make it in clear. Um, so you just use enough, but not too much. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, the, you can see now, you know, I got the sides on. I got this side on, and I got this side on. So I'm going to prepare myself because the next thing they're going to want me to do is put, put the board in place. But I want to use my glue my e6000 in a couple different ways first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to glue this bottom of this rail where the board's going to go real thin it don't have to be really thick but sorry i uh it's hard to do two things at once you can see i put glue on the bottom side of this all the way up and down just a real thin coat all right, don't put it on the sides, just on the bottom, because this is where the board's going to touch, right here, okay? Do it over here, too. If you get a little gobby with it, it just means you're going to need to do a little bit more cleanup, okay? Now, next part is I'm going to prepare the back piece here. 
So this back piece is going to slide in between here. And you can see it also has a groove that I'm going to put that silicone sealer in. So, okay. camera up a little bit by the way I'm doing this with my cell phone can you tell okay so you can see I got my cell phone in there next thing I'm gonna do is I gotta prep these nails I need three of these plastic nails per side so I'm gonna grab six of them right away so I got six of those. I'll bring them over here and I'll show you what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to actually take and take the, I don't think you see that screw, let me, let me turn it so you can see it on the posing paper. I'm going to actually put a little glue on the first part of the screw. So now I got glue on about half the screw and now let's see come over here you can see it's got the three holes one two three so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in you don't want it to stick out see how it's sticking out so I'm gonna pull it back a little bit so now I'm gonna do that with all three so they're all ready on both sides so here I'll alright so you see I got my Three screws lined up. One, two, three. Both sides, by the way. Here's the other side. So you can see now I have those three, those three ready to go. I got glue in here. And I have glue in here. I have glue down here. Now the great thing about E6000 is it doesn't dry that fast. So you got a little time to work. So don't get too panicky. However, don't take all day. It will start to cure. So I got glue here. Now there's only two places left. I'm going to go on the ends of my of the back of the drawer right here. You can see where those three nails are going to go into. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, some glue right there. So right there I got some glue on it's a sloppy job because I'm trying to film this but you can do a neater job it doesn't have to be really thick both sides too do both sides at the same time like I said this stuff doesn't uh, set really fast so you got a little working time alright that's a little bit better so now I got glue on both sides okay so I have this ready, the back ready, I have glue, I have glue here, I have glue on my plastic nails, I have silicone in my uh, groove right here, silicone in my groove here, okay we're ready to go. Now I'm going to take my, my bottom, my cheap ass Ikea bottom, sorry I swore, don't let your kids listen. Okay, I should have probably done this with a smaller drawer so you can see the whole thing. But I'm going to fit it in the groove. So you can see that. Put it in the groove, kind of line it up. And then, now this is really cool by the way. This stuff helps hold things in place. See, all I got to do is touch it and there's a little bit of tension to hold it in place. Which is great. So I got that in place. Make sure that you're, you're lined up down, down here. Sometimes you might have to tweak stuff. Maybe give something a little bit of a pull. Okay. Basically make sure you're lined up at the bottom. If you're not perfectly lined up, you could just push it over to line it up. And it'll move at least one more time because we got to hit this thing. So 
you'll see I'm going to put the top on this. Okay, watch me now. Watch me now. Okay, take the board. I'm going to put the groove in to that bottom piece. I might have to spread pieces to get it in place. And then just let the nat natural tension squeeze them back together. Now I'm going to try to line up one of the, the nails because that nail will start to go in by hand, but not all the way, obviously. Then take your hammer and I'm going to hit it. You don't have to go nuts, but you do want to support the drawer as much as you can when you're hitting. Okay, so you don't push the whole thing over and break the bottom of the drawer. Keep in mind, it's Ikea furniture. This isn't, you know, fabulous, you know, $2,000 furniture. This cost us $300, okay? Um, again, it doesn't make it bad furniture. It just makes it um, inexpensive. And a little fragile. Okay, as you can see, I got my nails in. There's a little glue that's up here. I could go ahead and clean up my glue if I wanted to. Um, just kind of clean it up with the razor knife. And then take the razor knife, put it in the scrap rag, clean it off. It don't have to be perfect because this is the back of the drawer you're not going to see this okay all right well now for the most part my drawer is assembled but i noticed right off the bat i'm not perfectly lined up so i'm going to move things around a little bit okay and we got one more part so let me prepare i'm going to flip this over so that the bottom of the drawer is facing upward All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install our rails. We have these rails with the wheel, okay, that goes to the end. Now this doesn't work on this side, obviously, because if I put it on the right way, the wheel's at the wrong end. This goes to the back of the dresser drawer, this wheel. So that one's gonna go to the opposite side, so I'll put it there. This one's the white right one see it fits here it has two holes here to for the screws that's going to hold this in place but i'm not just going to screw it in place of course not why would i do that i'm going to use my e6000 so the first thing is i put a little e6000 inside the screw hole not too much but just enough to help hold that screw in place so that so that it doesn't work itself out and then on, on the back side, important, don't put it on the side, the outside of this, it doesn't do you any good. The part that mates to the side of this, I'm going to dab some in multiple spots. You don't need um, all the way down the rail, just put dabs of this stuff. This stuff is amazing. This E6000 that is. So all it takes is a few dabs. Alright, and then... I'm going to put this on here and then kind of push it into place, help squeeze it around a little bit. Now I need to put my two screws in. These are the real tiny, little tiny screws here. Okay. Again, if you're not good with the power drill or power screw gun or impact screw gun, Use a regular screwdriver. Right, now, if you heard me, I only let it hit once. The hammer hit once. I don't want to over tighten this, but I want to make sure it's tight. Okay. Now you do that for the other side. And then we're going to flip it over, all right? Okay. As you can see, I got the other side on. Of course, like I said, the wheel should be to the back of the dresser drawer. 
Okay, here's the bottom. Now, keep in mind, this is what we did. We silicone in the slot here, the front slot we did too, where this meets this, the side of your drawer, that's glued together. We glued the rail to the side of the drawer. The bottom of this rail helps hold this in. So we have a lot more than what was designed to hold it in now. A lot more. That glue is going to really help really ensure that this stays in place and it'll take a lot more pressure before it breaks out. Can it break out? Yeah, of course it can. You can break anything. I'm just trying to make this dresser last as long as possible. And it could last forever if you care for it. It's just like anything. But, you know, this drawer is going to go to some kids. So I'm just trying to make it last as long as possible. And if we're lucky, it'll last a lifetime, right? Okay. I'm going to flip it over. Turn it around like this. Kind of looks good, doesn't it? A nice little white finish in the front, as you can see. Okay. So now one of the things I need to do is put on my knobs. So I have two knobs here. One, two. Okay. And there's screws that go into the knob. Screw goes from the back side, obviously. Here's my next tip. I'm going to take my Permatex Loctite. My blue, I'm going to put just a dab on the threads. It doesn't take a lot. If you put too much on, you could take a rag and just kind of damp it off. Because you don't want it spewing all over the place. You don't want it will stain stuff. So just enough. And what that Loctite's going to do is going to keep the screw tight for a long you know you ever have those knobs that just keep loosening up loosening up loosening up loctite it'll fix it for you every time so i'm going to put the screw through the hole i don't know if you can see the the screw came through i'm going to hold it with my finger and start it by hand till it gets snug i'm going to take a screwdriver from the back side and you can either tighten that screw or turn the knob but don't turn the knob too much and then finish tightening it off with the screwdriver on the back. If you tighten it up too much from the outside, you could ball up the paint or the finish that's on the front of your dresser drawer. Okay, we're going to do the same for this. A little Loctite. By the way, one of the things that I wanted to make a note was that the... Uh, E6000 that we're using this stuff here the E6000 has a little bit of an odor to it but it's far less of an odor than silicone sealer is way less okay and the odor goes away pretty quickly after you use it so that's another good reason why to use that E6000 there's just so many uses if you get any blue on, any of the Loctite on, the finish that you're going to see, make sure you clean it off as quick as possible. Use the soft rag, okay, any kind of marks. And basically, that's my dresser drawer, okay. It's a pretty rock solid drawer, okay. Now, I'm going to try to show you where, how well this works. I'm going to put the drawer into that thing right there. See my dresser? Right, as you can see, I got most of it together. You can see the rails on the inside here. It's a little dark, but um, there's rails on the inside that we put in. I used the, used the same methods where I put glue on the back to help hold it in place. Every place there was a joint of wood from here to here. I put some glue from here to here. Up here, there's a cross rail. I put glue on the top to here. It just basically makes the, the whole thing more solid and less likely to come apart in the long run. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and try to slide my dresser drawer in. Okay. There's wheels that you just line up. You 
kind of hold the dresser drawer on an angle. And then lift it upward. And then set it down. Now, if you did it right, you get to a certain point, the drawer closes itself. Okay? See that? Closes itself. So, it's kind of a nifty dresser from Ikea. As you can see, I got one more dresser drawer to do. But, it's a beautiful dresser. I think it only costs us about $300. Something that's already built for you, you're going to spend double that, if not more. So, you're going to save a lot by going to Ikea. It'll cost you a few more dollars buying the E6000. All right. An addresser this size, it's going to take about a tube and a half of E6000. Uh, smaller dressers, only a tube. So, you know, just prepare yourself. You can always go out and buy more. And you should probably only need about one of these per dresser. Okay, that's the silicone sealer I used in the grooves. Okay, and my name's Martin. It's a pleasure to meet you. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial, tips and tricks with IKEA furniture. Thank you and have a nice day.